Hi everyone. Today we are looking at chemical monitoring and management and in this topic we will look at how we can identify anions in our um, solution. So in our previous topic we looked at what sort of tests we can perform to see cations but in this one we will look at what sort of tests we should perform or rather what sort of solutions we should add to our unknown sample to see what sort of anions are present. So anions can also be identified in a similar procedure to cations. So you have two solutions, you add them and a precipitate forms and that should identify what type of anions are present. So we will restrict ourselves to the identification of the following anions because your syllabus tells us to look at only a certain uh, types of anions and those are the main ones we will look at today. So there is nitrate, chloride, bromide, iodide, sulfide, sulfate, carbonate, and phosphate. So these are the eight anions that we will look at in detail and what sort of solutions we should add to our sample to identify that these anions are present. So let's first look at a phosphate anion. So with silver iron, it should produce a precipitate. And what color should be that precipitate? So when you add phosphate, and you have um, silver ions added to it, it should produce a solid silver phosphate. And addition of ammonia followed by barium nitrate should produce a white precipitate. So with silver, it also produces a white precipitate. And if you b make the solution basic by adding ammonia, it should produce a white precipitate again. So for phosphate, our test is to add either uh, silver and forming a white precipitate or by adding uh, barium nitrate to a basic solution which will form white precipitate and indicate that phosphate ion is present. Also addition of uh, magnesium ion in an ammonia, again you have to make sure that the solution is basic by adding ammonia. So ammonium nitrate buffer produces a whiter precipitate of magnesium ion phosphate. You don't normally use this test, but again, you can use this as your confirmation test. So if you're not sure performing the previous test that whether it was a phosphate, you can add uh, magnesium and if it forms a wider precipitate, then it will indicate that phosphate is present. Now let's look at sulfate. So addition of barium ion produces a white precipitate, barium sulfate. So if you have two solutions, your sample, unknown sample contains sulfate anions and you know that you're adding barium to it. So if you add the two solutions together, a white precipitate should form and that will indicate that sulfate is present. It is insoluble in hydrochloric acid. So even if you add lots of uh, acid to your solution, the, so, uh, the precipitate should not dissolve. The precipitate should stay in your solution still and that will again confirm that the ion present is sulfate because barium sulfate does not dissolve in an acidified solution. So again, this can be a confirmation step. Acidification and addition of lead nitrate also produces a white precipitate. Again, if you don't want to ba add barium, even if you add lead nitrate, a white precipitate should indicate sulfate is present, but you have to make sure that you, have, you acidify your solution. So if you want to use lead nitrate as a testing solution, you need to make sure that your uh, sample is acidified, otherwise no uh, precipitate would form. What about carbonate? So if you have carbonate anion present, First what you do is you add um, nitric acid and if you add nitric acid to your solution, bubbles should form. The bubbles are indication that carbon dioxide is produced and what does that indicate? So if you put, if you have a test tube connected to your sample to another test tube con uh, containing carbon ions, carbon dioxide and uh, the carbonate ions together should form a white precipitate. So the reaction is carbonate plus um, acid should, nitric acid should give you carbon dioxide gas plus liquid water. And carbon dioxide turns lime water milky. So if you have a pipe going through your test solution to a beaker containing lime water, then the lime water should turn milky indicating again that carbon dioxide gas was formed. So cash, uh, carbon dioxide gas plus calcium hydroxide, which is a lime water, calcium hydroxide, gives you calcium carbonate, indicating that carbon ions are present, and also water as your products. So your products are 
calcium carbonate solid and water liquid. And also you have to make sure that your solution is quite basic so your pH should range between 8 to 11 for this reaction to occur. Now let's look at what if we have halides present, for example chloride, bromide and iodide are three main halides. So what happens if halides are present, how can you test them? So if you add um, silver nitrate to your solution, a precipitate should form and the precipitate can either be white or sort of a whitish, like yellowish white color and that will indicate that either of these three halides are present in your solution. So let's look at our first reaction. Our first reaction is silver plus chloride from silver chloride solid precipitate and that should be pure white in color. So if it forms a definite white color, you can be sure that silver chloride is present in your solution. So chloride ions are present in your solution to be more specific. What about bromide? So if you add silver with bromide, you get silver bromide, your precipitate and then it should be a sort of yellow in color. So it should be a whitish yellow, your precipitate should be a whitish yellow like you, as you can see in the photo. And what about iodine? So if you form silver iodide, it again should be a light yellow color. Then again, if you have these halides present in your solution, just to confirm that these are halides present in your solution, if you make them more basic, so if you add lots of ammonia in, the um, precipitate should dissolve this time. So if you have halides present and you have precipitate form, if you add ammonia and make the solution basic, then it should, uh, the precipitate should dissolve and also if you take it to sunlight, you can see the, your precipitate turning dark. So it should turn dark and it might turn to black. So these are the two confirmation tests you can perform. Either you can add ammonia and see whether it dissolves or you can take it to sunlight and you, it should, the color should darken so it should turn into a black color. So what happens if you have an unknown sample? How do you perform uh, the different tests to see what sort of ions are present in a solution? So first, you can add nitric acid. And if you add nitric acid and bubbles are formed, this indicates that carbonate ions are present. And if you keep adding nitric acid, then the carbonate, uh, at one time the bubbles will stop forming, but still again, it indicates that carbonate ions are present. And if you add barium t uh, ions to your solution and a precipitate forms, it will indicate that sulfate ions are present. And what happens if you add ammonia? So if you add ammonia until the pH is 8, and if still no precipitate forms, add more barium. So you should add more barium to your basic solution. And if precipitate forms, phosphate is present. So now the difference between um, identifying a phosphate anion and a sulfate anion is that when you add barium to your solution and a white precipitate forms straight away, it indicates that a sulfate anion is present. But to identify whether a phosphate anion is present, you first need to make a solution basic and you would do that by adding ammonia. So if you add lots of ammonia and the pH is between 8 and 11 and then if you add barium and then the um, precipitate is still present, it will indicate that you have a phosphate anion in your sample and not sulfate. So acidify with nitric acid and then add silver and if it a precipitate forms, a chloride is present. So to see if any halide is present, first you need to acidify your solution with nitric acid for example and then add silver, a precipitate forms and it's either of the halides, so if it's white, it's chloride. If it's sort of yellow, it's either bromide or iodide. This brings us to the end of the theory session. Now let's look at some questions to test your knowledge. Question 3. Question 3 tells us clear solutions of sodium hydroxide and copper to chloride are mixed together. What happens? So let's look at the reaction first. So you have sodium hydroxide aqueous again because remember if for a precipitation reaction you mix two liquid solutions together and a precipitate should form. So you have sodium hydroxide plus you have copper 2 chloride so CuCl2 copper 2 chloride you can also write it like this Cl2 and what are your products form? So you will have sodium chloride formed and 
you will have copper hydroxide form. Let's balance our equation. So you have two chlorines on this side and two sodium. So you have two sodium molecules, two hydroxide molecules, one copper molecule and two chloride molecules. So this is a reaction. And as we should know, that sodium is a group one element. So sodium chloride should not be a precipitate. It should remain as ions in the solution. So it's aqueous. And your precipitate should be copper hydroxide. And that should be in solid state because this is your precipitate and this is what you're looking for in your solution. So let's look at our options. Option one, um, so option um, A tells us that a clear white solution is obtained. So do you, uh, this is not true. And why is that the case? Because we know when sodium hydroxide and copper chloride reacts, a precipitate should form of um, uh, copper hydroxide precipitate should form. So this is not our answer because A tells us that no precipitate forms and the solution remains clear. So A is wrong. What does option B tell us? Common salt sodium chloride crystallizes out of the solution. Now again, we know that sodium chloride always stays that ion, as ions in your solution. So they never crystallize out unless you uh, boil your solution, then they would uh, crystallize out. But other than that, sodium chloride never, uh, is never present as precipitate. So therefore, option B is wrong as well because sodium chloride should not crystallize out of your solution. What does D tell us? D tells us that it's a neutralization uh, occurs. But again, neutralization does not occur because we are not adding an acid and a base. This is not a neutralization reaction. This is actually an oxidation reduction reaction. Hence, D is also wrong. Therefore, our answer is definitely C. And why is that? Because we know that when we add sodium hydroxide with copper chloride, uh, copper hydroxide should form as your precipitate and from your three you should know that copper hydroxide always forms a blue precipitate and option C tells us that a blue precipitate of copper hydroxide is op obtained so this is correct. So again sodium chloride remains as ions in a solution but the uh, precipitates dust form in this reaction and that precipitate is copper hydroxide which is blue in color. Let's move on to question four. Question 4 tells us to deduce the ion present in a sample from the results. So when you perform your experiments, when you do each of these steps, you should get these results and what do the results tell us? That's what we need to identify in this question. So when you add hydrochloric acid and gas, it, gas is produced, what ion is present? Carbonate ions are present. Because when you add hydrochloric acid to a solution, uh, bubbles, you should see bubbles, and those bubbles are actually uh, carbon dioxide. And if, when you put that carbon dioxide into lime water, it should turn the lime water milky, indicating that carbonate ions are present. What about when you add other ions? So, when you add other ions, uh, yellow precipitate forms. Because it's yellow in color, it indicates that lead is the ion that is present in our sample. So, whenever you add other ions and a yellow precipitate is formed, it will indicate that lead is present in our sample. Okay, what happens when you have at hydroxide ions and you get a deep blue precipitate? So as we looked at this um, reaction in our previous example, so in our previous question, so if a blue precipitate is formed, it tells us that copper is present. So again, when you add hydroxide ion to a solution and a blue precipitate is formed, it indicates that we have copper ions in a solution. And what about when you add silver ions and a white precipitate is formed? This will indicate that chloride is present. So as you can see, each of these um, different uh, ana uh, ions have different tests for the identification. And therefore, you can clearly determine which of the four um, anions or ions are present in your solution. Now let's move on to question five. Okay, in question five, we have to complete the following generalization. So in this uh, question, you might need to remember your solubility rules. Again, your solubility rules will not be given in your exam, so you need to remember them. Some questions might give some hint as to what precipitate should form, but most likely no um, rules will be given to you, and you should remember your solubility rules off by heart. 
So let's look at question A. A tells us that all sodium salts are, it should be soluble. And why is that the case? Because we know that sodium is a group 1 element. And we know that group 1 elements never form precipitate. They are always um, present in form of ions in a solution. Hence, sodium salts should always be soluble. Let's look at B. B tells us all nitrates are, so whether it's soluble or insoluble. Again, you should remember that nitrates are always soluble in a solution. So your answer should be soluble because, again, all uh, type of nitrates, no matter what sort of um, compounds they are bonded with, they should always be sol uh, soluble in your solution. So you should never see any precipitated, uh, precipitate formed with your nitrates. Now let's look at option C. Option C tells us that most carbonates are soluble or insoluble in your reaction. So the answer is insoluble. Again, why? Because we know that carbonates are insoluble in water. They can form precipitate such as calcium carbonate. So whenever you have a carbon ion form present in your solution and you add calcium to it, it will form a precipitate such as calcium carbonate. So as you can see that in this question you need to know your solubility rules. Sodium salts are always soluble in your reactions. Nitrates are again always soluble in your reaction. But carbonates are insoluble. This brings us to the end of the question session. In this topic, you looked at what anions are um, present in a solution and also what kind of tests you can perform to see what type of anions are present in a solution.